Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to show you something that Apple made a bit more complicated than they really needed to, and that's surrounding buses, stereo buses or mono buses, and this concerns leakage suppression in Trigger 2. I'm going to show you an easy way of achieving what used to be easy, but now isn't quite as easy. Let's take a look. So previously, in Logic, you could create an auxiliary bus channel and set it to mono or stereo, and you still can. But previously, you used to be able to set a stereo channel to receive two buses. So all buses were kind of mono, and if you wanted that stereo auxiliary channel, you had to create one that was stereo to receive two. So it would receive bus one and two, and that would be your stereo channel. Now, if you want a stereo bus, you can just set it to receive bus one, and it will. But that doesn't make it very easy to send stuff just to the left of that channel or just to the right. We just kind of send it to it and it makes it a lot more complicated. But now with sends on faders and independent pan, we can achieve with a few more steps what we used to be able to achieve with one step. Cheers, Apple. Let's take a look then. So with leakage suppression, you can insert two channels into trigger two. This is from Slate Digital and it's a really simple way of sample replacing drums. You can send what you want to trigger into the left-hand side of the plugin and send what you don't want it to trigger into the right-hand side. And with leakage suppression, it will suppress anything that comes in the right-hand side. So if you have too much spill on your snare channel, for example, you can tell it to ignore what comes in through the kick microphone, which you'd send to that plugin. Let's take a listen to this snare drum track, which has got a bit too much of the kick drum leaking through. So I'm just going to get rid of trigger to start off with so you can hear it on its own. quite a lot of spill on there. If I go to trigger in the usual way and bring it up, then we will see that there's a fair amount of spill coming through and we're getting some missed triggers. Let's go to 100% mix just for the starters. So I can play with the detail, I can bring it up, I can bring it down, but no matter how much I do that, I'm always going to have to either automate it or there's going to be some craziness going on where I'm going to be getting some of that kick spill through, and I don't want that. But fortunately, I've got the kick drum on its own channel, on a kick mic channel, and I can bring that into Trigger and tell it to suppress that. So let's do that now. So for this, I'm going to bring up my mixer in its own window, and I need to create two sends. First off, I'm going to select the kick and the snare and send them both to a bus. That's going to be bus 14, because why not? I'm going to call this snare trigger. So this is going to create a mono channel. We just want to flick the circle to become two circles so that we've got that now as a stereo channel. And I'm going to put trigger on here again. Now let's load up a sample. I'm going to use one of my own samples that you can get in the description down below. Um, this is from Rock Snare Pack 1 loads of hard hitting rock samples. So if we go to our trigger, we've got everything in the usual way, but we've also got this suppression channel. Now this suppression channel is there on a mono instance as well, but it's only gonna become useful when we've got it on a stereo track. So typically if we send both of these to that bus, then it's going to trigger off both of them. It's gonna trigger when there's a kick and when there's a snare. But we can use the sends on fader functionality and the independent pan on the channel. Let's take a look at that now. If I click on this send, I've got independent pan. I'm going to click independent pan on both of these and then bring up my sends on faders. So from here, I can tell Logic that I want this channel to be bussed into bus 14, but only to go into the left-hand side of it. So the snare signal is what I want to go into trigger. I want that to activate the sample. So that's going to go into the left and then the kick is going to go into the right. And that means that although I've got that spill on the snare channel, because I've got a kick mic on its own as well, whenever the kick mic has signal coming through it, it's going to tell Trigger, don't trigger a sample at this time because it's leakage, which is a handy feature to have. So let's come off sends on faders, now that I've panned everything, and go over to Trigger. Now if we take a listen to this snare trigger track on the auxiliary, we're going to hear more or less what we heard before. loads of spill. If I bring down this mix control, you can hear all those misfires. If I bring this mix back up again, 
and importantly, bring this suppression control all the way up to 100%. You're going to see that there are blue traces on trigger, as there were before, but there are now some red traces as well. And that is when the kick is getting fed in and it's telling you what it's suppressing. You can see that it's now recognizing all those misfires. It's recognizing all the times when the kick is coming in and it doesn't want to be firing a sample. Apple used to make this easy for us, but we've now got to go that one extra step and using that sends on faders and independent pan is a great way of actually utilizing this leakage suppression in the way that it was kind of meant to be utilized. So I hope that's been useful for you. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos on the channel. If you like this one, pop a little thumbs up and leave us something in the comments letting us know how you use this. Thanks a lot, take care.